Welcome back to Make It Custom. I'm Carl Fisher. Today we are going to learn about hammer forming and bead forming. This is all done with MDF pieces and using a hammer, air hammer, simple tools to make these shapes. I think you're really going to like this tip. But before we get into that, I want to thank everybody for all the feedback, all the comments, all the calls, and all the purchases of our planishing hammer. All the interest for the planishing hammer was generated by you guys. That's why we did the big push. And I just want to thank everybody for that. If you haven't checked it out, check it out. There'll be a link for it somewhere here. You can go have a look at our planishing hammer. We're doing a pre-order sale. It's 20% off for the first 25 hammers. We are almost sold out. If you get on it quickly, I'm sure you'll be able to get one. Anyway, let's get into this video. First step to the hammer form. This is our template. I'm pretending it's a, it's a gas tank end like an end cap for making a custom gas tank. We're probably gonna put our little X in here as well using the hammer form. First thing is we're just gonna trace it out on three quarter inch MDF. I need to make one piece that's the same size as this. And then my clamp piece that's gonna sandwich our piece of metal is gonna be slightly smaller than this so that you have room to hammer all the way around. So we'll get this cut, we'll get a chunk of metal and we'll start making some noise. Okay, I'm just gonna clean up the edges a little bit on the sander, square them up. All right, so there's our bottom piece. We're gonna make this top piece, which essentially is the clamp to the form. Just gonna kind of give it a bit of a trace. Okay, that should be good for our top piece. There's nothing super critical about this other than you want it to be slightly smaller than the lower piece so that you have room to hit it with the hammer. Now the next part we're gonna get into is we're gonna router these edges to give us a nice round to fold over. That's gonna round our sheet metal to give us like a nice radius on the radius. So I've just got a router bit in here that's gonna do that. It's just a outside corner radius. All right, so now we're gonna go grab a piece of sheet metal and trace it slightly larger than the outside of this because we want it to roll over the edge until it becomes flat again. So I'll go up there. Would you mind hitting that button for me, sweetheart? Trying to center it up right now. We might have a little more flange than we really want, so I might trim it a touch. Well, we're gonna try it that that size right there. Our next step is that we need to be able to clamp these two pieces together. If I was just doing this edge, I might just use a bunch of clamps so that I don't have to drill this material. But 
because I would like to add almost like a, an embossed X to stiffen up the center of the panel. I'd like to give that a try kind of by hand. I may even make a small die for a, uh, an air hammer to pound that X into there. I'm trying to do this without using a bead roller to show you guys that you don't, you don't need one. So what we got to do is bolt these pieces together. You can weld up the holes after you're done, but the bolting is very important. Like I said, you could use a clamp, but we're going to bolt this because you don't want that metal to move. You don't want any of your forming action with your hammer to pull the metal one way or another way. The problem would be if you were to hammer this edge and say start on this side, it may want to pull and slip this metal out this way and then you won't have enough material on this side. It's very important. You cannot let the metal shift on your form or else it will not stretch or shrink in the right areas. Basically, it's almost like you're making a jig. You want to be able to lock this metal into place and force it to go where you need it to. It's going to stay flat because you're forcing it to be flat by clamping it between two flat pieces of MDF and you're forcing it to go radius on the edges because you're hammering it and the only place it can go is in between here and there. It, that's the only place that any metal can move, only on the edge. Hammer forming is all about making sure that the metal has nowhere to go but where you tell it to. So if you're using thicker material, you might have to use harder material to form around so that that metal doesn't overpower your material. I've done it before. I've done 14 gauge with a hammer form, but I use steel. I use like three quarter inch thick steel and I can actually hammer form 14 gauge into whatever shape. And it, like you just beat it into submission. And the fact that your form is so strong only allows it to go where you want it to. Okay, it's enough babbling on. What I'm gonna do now is center these pieces. I wanna center this on here. And what I think I'll start doing first is laying out where my X is gonna go because that is all gonna be incorporated into what we're about to do. So, I already started kind of laying out the X I'm thinking about putting in here. I'd like to use a one inch wide bead in a big X. I don't have a die for the bead roller to do that. So if I wanted this, this is the only way I can get it with the tools that I have. Other guys would do the same method on a pull max machine. A pull max machine is like a reciprocating hammer. It would do a great job of this, but you don't need one if you do it this way. So now we've got everything drilled. Uh, we've drilled through our plate. We've drilled through these two. We might have to ream the holes a little bit when we stick all three together, but now basically we just want to bolt and sandwich the metal between our two pieces and uh, bolt everything tight. And then we can go ahead and hammer our radius all the way around. That's what hammer forming is. That's all it is. You just build stuff with wood and metal until you get the shape you want. Okay, here we go. Hopefully the holes will line up semi-okay. I'm gonna stick the bolts up from the bottom. Might have to add some washers because these are extra long because we're gonna add another piece of wood once we end up uh, trying to hammer our bead. So we'll probably time-lapse this part. It's just gonna be a bunch of me bolting stuff together. All right, so I didn't put all the bolts in because the rest of these bolts are more necessary for when we uh, make our X bead. That's gonna keep everything super tight so that we only stretch the areas of the X. So right now I've got these four that's plenty to hold our two halves together right now so that we can actually hammer the edges around. Pick your favorite hammer. I use a nice flat hand planishing hammer and, uh, and I like my heavy spoon to knock all these edges down and you just slowly work your way around, take your time and you'll just see it 
It'll all just come into place. It'll all just take the form of that lower buck. Here we go. All right, I just want you to take a look here at these little puckers that are happening. These puckers, they're like little wrinkles that will form as you're going. You wanna make sure that you're hitting those down. Whenever they start to peak, you wanna try and hit those down. You don't want them to become too big of a peak without working them because those are essentially little shrinks that are happening. As that metal is coming around that curve, it needs to shrink. So it's creating a tuck or a little pucker, a little wrinkle in the sheet metal. And uh, as you're working that down, it's actually making the metal thicker. The metal is coming together and shrinking. So if you let it become a tight pucker like that without taking care of it, it's trying to sh do all that shrinking right in that one spot. So by gradually going around and making sure that you knock any of those high spots down, you're allowing it to shrink more evenly and therefore it's just gonna be a nicer shrink. It's a lot tougher to hammer something that's like this than it is to hammer something that's like that. So just work your way around. This spoon works really good for sort of the flat areas. You know, the hammer works great for hammering down those tucks. My arms are very sore. <laughs> I was holding on to my plashing hammer for a couple hours straight last night working on somebody's roof and damn. Probably shouldn't have done this back to back. Just gotta keep drinking that coffee go juice. So, a uh, thousand hammer hits later this is what we've got. I wanna show you guys how tight we got this all the way around. We worked it all the way around, just kept going, kept going, till we got that shape that we put into our MDF at the bottom. So next I'm just gonna unbolt this, show you guys where it's at, and then we'll kinda get onto the beads. Dun, da, da, da. Da, 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 da. Well, it looks like we did really, really good. There's a lot of shape going into these edges and a lot of shrinking happened to get that to curl all the way over. And the beauty of the hammer form is that it holds the panel flat. It doesn't give the sheet metal an option on where that shrinking is gonna happen. It has to happen right there because everything else is held super tight. So that's why hammer forming works so well is because you've, you've got it sandwiched, you've got it clamped. It's not giving the sheet metal an option other than to go where you want it to go. So check that out right there. I mean, those are some really nice radius curves in this panel. You can use your imagination on how you could use this in other ways for other parts and other cars or I mean gas pump doors or like whatever. It can be used so many different ways. I've probably made 30 or 40 of these hammer forms in the last few years, working on different cars, working on different parts, not even just cars, motorcycles, like whatever, you can, you can really use this. So the next part that I wanna show you is the beading that uh, we're gonna get out of this same hammer form buck. So my next plan is that in this uh, MDF here, I'm gonna actually make a one inch drill hole on these circles, I've already marked them. And then I'm gonna cut straight through with a skill saw, and I'm just gonna cut a one inch X, a one inch wide X right out of here, out of both pieces. And then we're gonna sandwich it all back together again, and I'm gonna use a hammer 
and just a one inch piece of rod that I've ground to a nice round. And we're gonna knock that all the way down. And that's where these other bolt holes are gonna come into play. Those other bolt holes are gonna sandwich the outside perimeter of that X so that the only place that the metal has to move is in and stretch that X. I'm not sure if I explained it correctly, but that's what we're gonna do. So you're gonna see right now. I'm gonna clamp these pieces back together without that sheet metal. And we are gonna drill our holes. All right, go find a one inch drill bit. All right, so now that we've got our holes all the way through, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna unbolt it and then I'm going to draw my lines and just use a skill saw as best I can to make my, uh, my cuts to connect these one inch holes. Got all these tools, but I don't have a hand wood saw here. <laughs> That's what I would have used to finish these little cuts up, but jigsaw will be fine. Just brought a little file just to, just to finish up that little edge. Okay, since this is our bottom piece, you know, this is the one that we hammered our edges around and what we're gonna actually be pushing the metal into, these edges are more crucial than that top piece. So if you're gonna mess up, mess up on that one. This one is just here to give, you know, clearance and somewhat of a guide for the hammer. But that one is the final edge, so to speak. All right, so we got our X's cut. There's our top piece, which is our top clamp. This is our bottom piece. When we put this piece on here and this piece back on there, the idea is that I'm gonna take this and I'm gonna hammer it da -da 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 all the way along. And the only place that that metal has to go is right into our grooves. Actually, Christina brought something up that I hadn't got to yet. She's smart, she thinks ahead. She said, why isn't there something underneath it to stop you for depth? Well, that's what we're getting to. Um, and that's also why our bolts are too long, is because I'm gonna make another piece to go on the back side of this that is gonna be our depth stop. We're not gonna go the full three quarters of an inch for depth. We might go, you know, a quarter inch or, or three eighths of an inch, maybe even a half an inch. But anyway, I'm gonna um, clamp this together. We're gonna make another piece of wood for the back side, And then I'll probably put maybe a piece of flat bar or something in there as a spacer so that our bead stops at the depth we want our bead. I think 3 eighths of an inch is probably good. I'll see what material I've got here so that we can make it uh, quick and easy. We'll drill our next piece. Okay, here's a chunk of wood that's gonna work for us. I'm just gonna cut it off just right along here. Just continue the cut that's already there. Oh, perfect. Three eighths plywood it is. Just gonna make our little spacers.
Okay, there's our first spacer. We're gonna have to cut this one right here and right there. in like that and there we go all right line our holes back up put our sheet metal on in there put our top piece on hopefully our bolts are long enough come on oh just just long enough i'm gonna actually take the washer off so I can have a washer on the top side. There we go. Okay, since this is what I'm talking about, this is a one inch shaft, just normal. There's nothing special about it. It's just regular one inch steel solid round bar. I'd like to get a little bit more of a round in it than what we used last time. So I'm just gonna hop over onto the lathe. I don't have a radius tool for my lathes. I just use a, my three inch grinder while it's spinning and make whatever shape I want. Looks pretty good. Smoother the better. Smoothed it out a little. All right, so this is our tool. We're just gonna run it all the way along in here. And you can take your time. You can take as much time as you want. You're, it's gonna make your arm sore. Mine's already sore. So <laughs> we're gonna go over it a little bit and then I'm gonna show you another trick because a lot of you guys probably have an air hammer and uh, we're gonna make this into an air hammer tool to finish it all off. Those things are 5,000 hits per minute. so. It's gonna take a lot less time to do it that way. All right, here we go. So as you can see, I'm sweating. This is difficult. It will take time if you're using a hammer. So we have already stretched a ton. If you have a look in there, you can see even with, I'm not sure, maybe 100 hits or so, we've got a lot of stretch happening. We're denting all this in into that void underneath. I'm going to make this end into an air hammer end so we can just go for it. You probably have an air hammer and if you don't, they're cheap you know, 30 bucks on Amazon, you can get one, and then you'll be able to make an air hammer head for your hammer forming. So I'm just gonna cut this off a little bit short, and I'm gonna weld it on to just an extra air hammer piece. I don't use all the bits that come with an air hammer, so I'm just gonna cut one of those off, weld that on, and brrr, we're gonna go to town. It. That's all it is. That's what I'm gonna weld together. That's gonna be our new air hammer tool for hammer forming one inch beads. Just eyeballing her straight. Okay. All right, here we go. All right, so this is way easier than using this, but I, I wanna, you know, 
forewarn you, I think that we were asking quite a bit by going that deep with the bead. We did get it super deep and a one inch wide bead that's that deep, nobody's gonna do it with this. You could do this with maybe like a three eighths wide bead that wasn't so uh, deep, wouldn't be an issue. For something this major, you pretty much gotta have an air hammer. Let's have a look at what we got. I'm really excited to have a look at this thing. This is probably the, the deepest bead hammer form I've ever done. But you could use that technique on anything, firewalls, floor pans, gas tanks, anything you can think of. It's just MDF and simple tools. So hopefully you guys give this a try at home and uh, tell me what you think. Holy cow. <laughs> Look at how deep that bead is. That's crazy. That's just crazy. Look at that thing. One thing that um, I've learned about this is that if I'm gonna use a hammer that hits that hard, this, as a stopper, it could have been metal. If this was a metal stopper, I think we would have had an even more consistent bead. There were some spots where I kind of got stuck with it, and I can feel that it went a little deeper in some spots than others for the bead, but I mean, all in all, it's a pretty intense piece. Like, look at how flat that is. There's so much stretch in there. Take it for what you will. Use your imagination, use that tip at home. I hope you enjoyed this segment of Make It Custom. I really actually had quite a bit of fun making this and showing you guys. I think it's one of those techniques that um, can be applied to so many different things that if you didn't know this one and you now know it, I hope that you use it for the rest of your life. It's one of those things that I've used ever since I learned it. It just sort of opened my eyes a little bit into hammer forming and bead forming and what can be done with the tools that you probably already have. So thanks everybody for watching Make It Custom. Don't forget to like, click subscribe, hit notifications. We're trying to do it twice a week. It's been a little bit difficult, but we're staying on it. And we really appreciate y'all and all the comments, all the questions. You guys are what makes this possible for us. So thank you so much. While I'm at it, I want you to check out DD Speed Shop. If you haven't already checked him out, he's a really cool dude, Canadian guy, lives in Manitoba. He just went on, I think it was called Miles of Mayhem with zip ties and bias plies, shade tree mechanical. Those guys are all super fun guys that have really great content. If you like this stuff, maybe you'll like their stuff too. So check them out, DD Speed Shop. Yeah, and everybody have a great one. Thanks a lot.